from the Mercy One Studio. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists. Be Not Afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Join Father Fabian Moncada every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Also tune in Sundays at 10.30 a.m. for Be Not Afraid in Spanish on Iowa Catholic Radio. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Welcome to Be Not Afraid here on Iowa Catholic Radio, 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM. This is Father PJ McManus, Pastor of Christ the King, in for Father Fabian Mancata. Please pray for Father Fabian and all the priests who work in our immigrant communities who are working assiduously to help people um, get their paperwork together before the change in administration. Friends, this morning, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your own beloved son. Grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, friends, the Church celebrates during these, these waning days of Christmas and beginning days of ordinary time the, the, the baptism of the Lord Jesus in the River Jordan. And this seems a fitting time for us to turn attention to the role of baptism in our own lives, uh, our own lives as Catholic Christians, and mindful of the role that baptism plays in the life of other Christians. And so to do that, I've uh, brought along uh, Jimmy Olson, who helps keep us together all the time here at Iowa Catholic Radio. We couldn't do anything at all without him. And, uh, and he's going to help keep me on track today relative to baptism. Good morning, Jimmy. Ch- checks in the mail, by checks the way. Checks in Th- the mail. Thanks for that. <laughs> Jimmy, um, for, for you listeners— You need to go to confession after that? You probably that was, do. That was a lot of things that you said nice about me, and I'm not sure how much of it was really true. I'm certain I do. <laughs> uh, Jimmy's half-teasing because he knows I usually go to confession when I come into the radio station. So, oh, uh, Actually, I didn't know that. <laughs> I, kind of, I was assuming it was the other way around, but, you know, hey. Quit pro quo. <laughs> so, 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 Jimmy, um, uh, for uh, listeners that may not be as aware, could you describe what you do here at the station? So, I am the assistant program director. So, uh, I guess you could say second or third in command or whatever mm-hmm. charge. Uh, mainly dealing with the program. So, I work with all the hosts to help them, you know, have better shows. You know, what the topics are. I mean, again, it's it's that that host development, like I've had to do for years, mm-hmm. being in, in radio and just helping them be the best that they can be, and helping them with topics sometimes because they might be stuck a little bit of like, you know, hey, what should I talk about? Uh, but at the same time, you know, helping Deacon Tony, just keeping things on the air. Um, You know, dealing with our automation system that we have, uh, putting things together. In fact, uh, new year, new shows uh, from, you know, from EWTN. And we've got to get a lot of things kind of back on track. Or if things kind of go down, we got to get the station back on the air. So work with the engineer and... uh, it's really hard to explain. I just do a lot. <laughs> you do do a lot, for which we're grateful. <laughs> yeah, we we try to keep the ship off the rocks. That is true, but uh, sometimes it hits it head on. I really, I really <laughs> like the language you use there of host development. I can affirm that in terms of what you've done for me personally, but mm-hmm. but I think it helps kind of tee us up for 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 what we're trying to get our arms around today. So 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 baptism in whatever tradition has everything to do with what it means to. To live the Christian life, right? Right. And so, and so, like, there's a certain way in which in which baptism is sort of Christian development, right? We're helping Christians become the people that they mean to be, they intend to be in Christ. Uh, could you that, or could you even use like say milestones type mm-hmm. of thing? So they're hitting so that milestone moment, right? Right. Right. Okay. Right. So, so talk to us, Jimmy, about about baptism in the tradition that you come from. Right, because my tradition a little different. Uh, being, growing up, uh, uh, as you always call me Protestant, but I guess I always knew it as Pentecostal, so sure. I guess I'm still trying to figure out some of these words. Um, but so for, for me, growing up, baptism, um, and, and I know with many denominations being you know, either uh, Catholicism or a Lutheran, they have the, the baby baptism. Mm-hmm. So you, you know, be, being sprinkled, and I know some actually do the dumping of water mm-hmm. um, over their head. And but for us, it was more of a dedication. Mm-hmm. So you know, you're, the baby is being dedicated to God. You are, of course, as the parents and even the grand, the godparents are part of that to basically give their vow 
that they are going to, you know, bring this child up, you know, God fearing and uh, understanding the Bible, you know, doing what they need to do to bring them up correctly of, you know, what God is looking for us to do Mm -hmm. as you go through, through scripture. Then for us, the baptism actually comes in, um, which I know some deal with this more, again, depending on the denomination, where it's the confirmation. Mm-hmm. And I know, uh, I think we've had the conversation before with Catholicism, that's your first uh, confession. But mm-hmm. then like with Lutheran and all that, that's when they get baptized. For me, it was that age of accountability. Mm-hmm. So it could be you know, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, it's whenever that time as, because we're all different. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're... It's not hard and fast. Right. It's not that, you know, okay, none of us understand right and wrong until we're 13 years of age. I mean, some of us can get it faster. Some of us are, you know, 35 and still haven't figured it out. Um, So then for us, that's what, and then for us, it's that full submersion. Mm -hmm. So when you read about the baptisms in the New Testament with John the Baptist, that that's is what, you know, we, that was how we did that. And when our baptism came in. So that's kind of how I grew up in, in being Pentecostal charismatic. So rituals tell us a lot about um, what it is we're doing and, and, and what they mean. And Jimmy, I think, has raised several important kind of ideas or themes here for us, right, around the question of uh, uh, the question of infant baptism and why we do that mm-hmm. um, uh, and why other groups don't necessarily, of, of the question of accountability and what, what like, personal investment means in this, um, and, uh, and, and then, like, what it means moving forward, like why why do we do the things that we do, and then what do they mean for us after these milestone or key right. key events? Looking backwards, what did this start or what did this do? I think it'll be important, friends, uh, that that you know if you want to get the most out of this, maybe now resource in your mind if you were uh, baptized at an age you can remember, try and remember your own baptism, um, and if you weren't. Most of us have been present for the baptism of somebody else. So think about uh, a baptism that you've seen, either of a baby or of a grown-up, and and what kind of thoughts and feelings and ideas that stirred inside you in order to make the most of whatever happened to you when it happened. Remember that we're at Iowa Catholic Radio, 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM, and online at the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Be not afraid. Hi, this is Father John Ricardo, and I want to thank Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory for underwriting Christ is the Answer. Losing a loved one, as we know, is never easy, and it can leave you feeling lost and even hopeless at times. But Caldwell Parish helps ease that burden by sincerely caring both about your loss and about your faith. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory is Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Their number is 515-276-0551 or online at caldwellparish.com. Thank you, Blessed Be International, for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Everyone lives their life 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. How we use that time directly affects if our life will leave a significant impact or not. Each year, Blessment International leads Central Iowans on a 12-day, all-inclusive experience sharing the heart of Christ with children in South Africa. Teams are forming to do something significant in an African child's life. Learn more at blessmentinternational.org. That's blessmentinternational.org. Is it time for a new roof? Then it could be time for you to get to know Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company entering its 30th year of business. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. With Bell Construction, the owner will come to your home or place of business in person to inspect and ensure the quality of work that you deserve. They pride themselves in working with you on a personal basis and making sure you are satisfied. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. What is the best gift ever? Giving a Catholic education is at the top of my list. Your contribution to CTO helps families send their children to our Catholic schools who otherwise could not afford it. In giving to CTO, you receive the best tax credits ever. Pledge or donate online at ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Dowling Catholic Sports is provided in part by Ashworth Vision Clinic. With two licensed optometrists, Barbara Sheets, a Dowling graduate, and Dr. Craig Harper, the Ashworth Vision Clinic team provides complete eye exams, contact lenses, glasses, glaucoma testing, and pre- and post-operative care. Ashworth Vision Clinic is located at 60th and Ashworth in West Des Moines. 515-440-4610 or online ashworthvision.com. Thank you. 
Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio, 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM, and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. We're talking about baptism today, and <clears throat> Jimmy Olson, the assistant program director here, uh, helpfully recalled you know, some, some moments in his own life uh, and experience of baptism as a Pentecostal. Um, for Roman Catholics, you know, we typically experience baptism in one of two ways, mm-hmm. right? Um, uh, uh, adults, when they're baptized, um, go through a process that today is known as the rite of Christian initiation of adults, and that's usually a year or two or sometimes three long, uh, three year long kind of uh, process that's meant to help really um, ensure that the person understands what they're committing themselves to, gets the faith in a in a reasonable sort of way, and spiritually prepares them for the kind of the the kind of work that they're going to be asked to do as a Christian. Um, but numerically, the much more frequent experience for us is uh, of infant baptism, which happens every Sunday and in a lot of places, most every day, depending on how many babies are being had and, and people are bringing them to church. Um, we had a baptism. Ask Father, ask, ask Father PJ that nine months, right? Yeah. After well, 2020? After, after 2020. <laughs> how many people have been stuck inside? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I, I won't tell you what snowstorm resulted in me, but um, <laughs> that's the uh, that, that, that's where this stuff comes from. And, and for us, there's really, um, the, the ritual says a lot about what we think is happening. So, so baptism, whether it's for adults or children, always begins at the door of the church for us. We start at the door with the idea that baptism is itself sort of the doorway or the gateway mm-hmm. to, to, to kind of everything else. Um, and, and then you move from the door into what's called the nave or like the people's part of the church, the part where the people sit. Um, and, and the reason there is because scripture is going to be read and the gospel is going to be preached and faith comes through hearing, right? And right. so you need to situate yourself in a place where you can effectively hear. And the idea is that that baptism is the sacrament of conversion and the sacrament of faith. You you hear and then you're moved to this sacrament of conversion. You're moved to conversion and so you you want to commit yourself or dedicate yourself. And so you move to the font, which is in different places in different churches and there's a we could do a whole episode just on that, but that's not kind of the point. The <laughs> the goal is that you move from where you're sitting to where the water is. Um there are, something happens in, in Catholic and um, in some uh, more um, historically historical Protestant groups like Lutherans or Anglicanisms that doesn't um, typically happen in, in more uh, Pentecostal or evangelical groups, and that's an anointing that accompanies the baptism. There's actually two. The first one happens before uh, the child is baptized. We do this with adults, too, and it's a kind of memory of a time that um, athletes would rub themselves down with oil in order to make themselves hard to hold on to. And okay, so, so so uh, so for like me, right. the dedication, you're being anointed with oil, right? So okay, right. So so, so that's the move. Is, is right. it's, it's 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 setting apart and protecting, right? You sure. Wanna, you want to like you're making them slickery, so it's hard for the devil to hold on to them. Um, slickery, yeah, right. <laughs> New and, word for 2021. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and then the baptism proper happens, and and baptism in the Catholic Church happens in a variety of ways. Mm-hmm. The submersion or immersion that you're talking about is certainly one thing that happens. We don't often do that as much with babies because it's hard to maneuver an altogether wet baby. Um, when I taught at the seminary, we'd make the guys practice just so that nobody would drop babies. Now, now mm-hmm. so quick question on that. Mm-hmm. Is, is some of that also on, because again, they talk about the, the sprinkle or the pouring of water. Mm-hmm. Is that sometimes depending on you know the the where you are, of in, course. you know, you, you, in, in how you uh, uh, culture? Exactly, exactly. So, so it's important to remember, right, that a lot of these rituals hearken to a time when, um, uh, when baptisms were done nude, and they were done nude for adults. And so you would, yeah, Deacon Tony's getting, he's feeling like he was left out of something. Um, <laughs> but, the, but, but the baptisms were, were done in the nude, and so they would be done in single-sex groups, mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, separated out. And then, and then the, the anointings were not the kind of spare ritual actions that often accompany things now, but w- would involve the whole body. Right, so that um, like they would dump the oil on your head and right, it ran and down it your down. entire yeah, body. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and, and again, anointing right is an action itself, much like the washing of baptism that carries a number of different kinds of ideas. Right, sometimes it's setting someone apart for office, like when kings or priests are anointed, and other times it's it's the the the, the anointing for healing or restoration, like sure. like lotion we would do today, and other times. It's the kind of athletic thing that I talked about before. In baptism today, there's the anointing before, which is attached to sort of exorcism, and then as soon as the baptism is done, there's an anointing after. Now, when adults are baptized, um, or older children, um, that, uh, that anointing 
is confirmation. They're the okay. same thing. Sure. Um, when it's a younger child, it's a kind of memory of confirmation, and the, and the prayer itself seems to nod toward what that would be, but it's looking forward to when that would actually happen themselves. And then the final act in baptism, um, both for children and adults, is to bring them to the altar. For adults, it's to give them Holy Communion, right? Mm-hmm. Because that for us, communion really kind of completes the whole action. For babies... Uh, in the Western churches, we don't communicate babies. In the Eastern churches, they do. But it's to it's to kind of nod to the fact that what started here uh, doesn't end here. It's got a it, 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 it's got a finishing point that's far out yet in the child's life, and that and that will be intimately tied to the child's relationship to the Lord's Supper, and that um and, and, and that really kind of um points to the sort of this 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 threefold move. The, the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist are all tied together, and and they're tied together ritually by the way that we move the child through the action. And I know a lot of people don't like using it, but it's kind of like that start of the journey, you know, where mm-hmm. it talks in the in the Bible of how sure we are we are all sojourners. So it, it's that start, and then we are on this journey through our life, right? You know, you're teeing them up for something else, right? You know, from as they say, from you know cradle to the grave. That's right. That's exactly it, right. And so, so, so the role of baptism, especially infant baptism in the church, really is to, um, to, to help situate children in a way that parents and children together can best grow each other in the faith and make sure that the kids are, are, are best equipped to have that deep and real encounter with Christ so that their whole life is lived just in, with, and through Christ from top to bottom. Friends, remember that we're on Iowa Catholic Radio, 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM. Be not afraid. Thank you to Mercy One for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. From the cardiovascular experts at the Iowa Heart Center to the pediatric services of Mercy Children's Hospital and Clinics. Mercy provides complete care for Central Iowa's adults and children with more than 50 primary care and specialty clinics in the Des Moines area. Find a convenient Mercy One location near you online at mercydesmoines.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio's broadcast of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities is provided by Kemen, a global ingredient manufacturer using science to transform the quality of life for 80% of the world. Kemen is on the leading edge of molecular science, manufacturing more than 500 specialty ingredients for the human and animal health and nutrition, pet food, aquaculture, nutraceutical, food technologies, crop technologies, and textile industries. Kemen strives to sustainably transform the quality of life every day for 80% of the world with their products and services. Kemen, using science to transform the world. Online at Kemen.com. Thank you, Dental Associates, for supporting Dowling Catholic Sports 365. Dental Associates, addressing your smile, needs, and dreams. 515-225-6742. Online at Des Moines-DentalAssociates.com. Hi, this is Father John Ricardo, and I want to thank Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory for underwriting Christ is the Answer. Losing a loved one, as we know, is never easy, and it can leave you feeling lost and even hopeless at times. But Caldwell Parish helps ease that burden by sincerely caring both about your loss and about your faith. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory is Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Their number is 515-276-0551 or online at caldwellparish.com. Thanks to Blessman International for their support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Every year, Blessman International leads teams of Central Iowans to share the compassionate heart of Christ with orphans and vulnerable children in South Africa. You can learn more and sign up for a trip at blessmaninternational.org. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid on Iowa Catholic Radio, 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, 94.5 FM, Father P.J. McManus and Mr. Jimmy Olson. Which, uh, speaking of that whole host thing, you know, of how I'm helping you get better, don't forget, if you ever miss any of the Be Not Afraid episodes, you can always catch them on demand or on podcast on the Iowa Catholic, Catholic Radio, Radio app, app or online at iowacatholicradio.com. Jimmy's going to keep us on. <laughs> so, friends, um, I, I wanted us to reflect on the words uh, from the Holy Gospel this weekend uh, that recall the Lord's own baptism. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. This is what John the Baptist proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. 
And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, Jimmy, at the end of the last segment, you touched on, I I think, what this really speaks to directly, right, is if the whole of the Christian life is the following of Jesus, trying to live the life of Jesus out in our own lives, Jesus' public ministry, his public life, begins mm-hmm. with his baptism. And so, so baptism, whether that initiates when we're, when we're little babies or, or bigger grown-ups, it starts, it marks something, right? And, and everything afterward is meant to be something new and different and dynamic. So what do you think that looks like uh, in the tradition you come from? Well, like I said, for us, it's that that start of the journey. So when you're getting dedicated as the child, it's pretty much in some ways, even though it's it's around the baby, it's focused more on the, the parents and godparents. You know, again, taking their vow that they're going to raise you up. You know, uh, you know, learning about God and through the church and and you know, bringing you up as a as a godly child. Mm-hmm. And then when it goes into that age of accountability and you take that baptism, now that is where. So there, the parents are starting your journey right. to kind of create you and form you. Now, I am starting my journey at my baptism where I am now responsible for me. And I am needing to, you know, take those steps of what I need to do to, you know, learn more about God, learn more about Jesus, to really understand where I'm going, what I need to do, and to, you know, be very cognizant of, you know, my life and the steps that I take. How should the Christian life look different than other people's lives? So that's an interesting question. That really is, because when I look at it, I'm not sure that it really needs to, say, look different. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, again, the whole point of, you know, being a Christian is being a better person. Mm -hmm. And I think... We all talk about that. I mean, we're in a new year. We always hear that new year, new right. you. And, of course, for me, this year, it's just new year, new calendar. You know, <laughs> let's see how 2021 actually plays out. But, but I mean, we're always trying to be better. We're trying to learn of how I can develop, as we talked earlier with host development. But I'm developing myself, being a, a, a better person, being a better friend, being a better father, being a better brother, you know, uncle aunt, sister, mother, and you, you, you make that list. And something that I like using a lot is, you know, being better today than I was yesterday Mm -hmm. or being better tomorrow than I was today. I mean, I heard that years ago and it's so true. And I think that's really what that step is. And I don't know that the, the difference to me of a person, depending on how they believe or do not believe, which shouldn't matter. You're, you're trying to help people out, but it's, the difference is you should try to be the best person that you can be every day. It does not matter. The difference is your relationship with God, your mm-hmm. relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's where that Christian change Comes is. In. That's really, in some ways, if you think about it, there's not a difference. This is how we should be, but Jesus is the difference. Ah, so, 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 so the move really is life in Christ. Right. That's, that, that's what changes. You know, I think one thing that... Um, uh, that the the Catholic and the Orthodox traditions bring to this conversation about baptism is that um, is that it accents the lifelong process of conversion. Mm-hmm. So 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 of course there are key moments that really really matter where things turn on the inside of us. But because this is tied up with the faith of our parents and godparents and really the whole community that we're raised in, right? That that, that conversion isn't going to be a sort of one and done deal, but it's a thing that we we were constantly growing in, just as as children we're constantly growing up. Right. The other thing is, I think you know that the role of baptism in the church is um, is really formative for the whole community, mm-hmm. even if you're baptized as an adult. Seeing another person's baptism is meant to stir something in you, right? right? It's meant to sort of reconfirm that grace of first conversion in you, and and really stir you to something, some something powerful. Um, and 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 I think what we're ultimately kind of after here is what the prayer at the at the beginning of the hour uh, suggested, and, and what we hear right here out of the gospel, right, is for us to hear what Christ heard: "You are my beloved; in you I am well pleased." And I think another piece of that is it's then our responsibility. Again, my, my relationship with Jesus is a personal relationship. It's my relationship with God. But this is where you and I come together, and we 
lift each other up. We encourage one another. We help one another. Not by beating them over the head, but it's right. like you're having a hard day. You know, how can I help you be better? Right. That and relation, then move forward. The relationship gets mediated through other people and right. through the Christian community we find ourselves in. Friends, pray this year for the renewal of the grace of holy baptism in each one of you. Any Anyone that, listening that may not be baptized, um, certainly reach out to the, the, the churches nearest you to talk about that and what that would mean for you and what kind of change that might bring in your own life. And do remember that the Lord who has begun his good work in you longs only to bring it to completion. And may the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Be Not Afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Join Father Fabian Moncada every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Also tune in Sundays at 1030 a.m. for Be Not Afraid in Spanish on Iowa Catholic Radio. Go forward and be not afraid. Be Not Afraid is underwritten by Associated Ophthalmologists.